Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. It is Mysterious Forces Live, and it is Saturday, June 1st, 2019. My, my, my. The news that has come out today. I'm getting all kinds of fun surprises. Following social media from Contact in the Desert. Following the goings on there over in Indian Wells, California. I was going to do a show where I was going to review Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation. And I am going to review the show. But oh my my, the news on Luis Elizondo, at least according to The Intercept. And we will get to that, and that is going to be the meat and potatoes of tonight's show. Is Luis Elizondo a fraud? Question mark. And it's a question. The guy hasn't had a chance to uh, defend himself yet or uh, retort or, uh, you know, come up with some kind of paperwork, uh, a discharge paper or something showing his MOS or something to uh, um, refute the allegation. And it is an allegation at this point. I'll make it clear. I'm sort of newsy. I'm sort of entertainmenty, but the, I don't know if you can see this. I, I, I want to try this. I, I haven't looked. I don't. This may not work. No, that's no, not going to work. Camera doesn't like that at all. That's a picture. If you go to my Twitter page and at my forces live, or if you go to my Facebook page, you're going to see a picture of C.W. Chanter with uh, Jimmy Church uh, standing together, both of them smiling, uh, no one uh, with a fist uh, made. And uh, I'm a smart ass, and at the top I put fade to uh, heart, fade to love. And uh, I think it's funny to see uh, pictures of C.W. Uh, from Contact in the Desert uh, chumming it up with his new buddies. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to bust his chops too much, but man, I'll tell you what, uh, there's a few people on uh, social media that uh, on Twitter that are kind of hammering um, CW, <laughs> calling him a hypocrite. But uh, we'll deal with that another day. I've got too much good shit to talk about. I'm going to keep this show a tight 30 because I think uh, Kelly Farmer explaining esoteric is going to pop on at 7.30. And... Uh, wife and I have dinner reservations tonight and, uh, I'm going to get the hell out of here. So it's going to be a tight 30, then go looking for, ex blah, blah, blah. then go looking for explaining esoteric with Kelly Farmer. Um, I see blue eyes. I see Sherry Scoble. I see, uh, Sasha Bommel. I see Sherry Scoble. Hello. Hello. All blue eyes. Um, it's hard telling what the turnout's going to be here with contact in the desert going on. There's a lot of competition for attention at this time. And, uh, but anyway, if you're watching, thank you. And uh, please like and subscribe and uh, share this video as well. Now, I'm hoping that I might be positioned in a particular way tonight because I'm not known for breaking news. However, I think the timing is might be just right. And correct if I'm wrong. But uh, this news from The Intercept uh, was published today about Luis Elizondo, this accusation. And um, I don't think anyone else has gotten this on their go yet. I think because some people are busy and maybe even Kelly or someone's going to come on later tonight. Uh, people have certainly been uh, talking about it on Twitter and it's gotten all the rage there. But I might be the first one to talk about Luis Elizondo on their show. I might be at the top of the game tonight on this. And uh, so I hope so. And uh, if I'm wrong about that, correct me. I'm not, I don't want to make a claim true by any means. But uh, I think I might be the first one out of the shoot here. So anyway, welcome. Thank you. It's Saturday night. Um, Tonight, like I mentioned, was just going to be a straight-up review of Unidentified uh, Inside America's UFO Investigation, which is the uh, Tom DeLonge uh, 
TTSA to the Stars Academy uh, pseudo production, I guess. I don't know if they're really behind it in terms of the actual production company or if they just uh, got in bed with the History Channel and the History Channel is actually producing, uh, physically producing the show. I don't know. I'd like to know more. I did see in the credits that uh, Tom DeLong wrote all the music for the show. So at least he's getting another paycheck off of it that way, right? And um, <clears throat> it's interesting. I thought it was a good move in terms of uh, cinematography and how they presented the show and, and the editing. It was done pretty well. Um, it's pretty tastefully done. Um, I like the way it was done. Uh, I thought they were smart to use Brian Bender. Uh, he's a journalist with Politico, and he's the one who broke the story with Politico um, in December of 2018 uh, with the Tic Tac UFO video. And so I thought it was appropriate to have him describing some scenes. It was interesting to see Commander David Fravor uh, being interviewed and giving his side of the story. Um, there was also a female pilot who I assume may still be in active duty, and she is not shown and not named. And uh, she was, uh, they kept calling her the wingman, but I wonder if wing pilot would be an appropriate, uh, maybe gender neutral term uh, for that. So uh, she was the wingman or wing pilot, perhaps, uh, of Commander Fravor uh, when they saw the Tic Tac UFO, and uh, they were flying from the Nimitz. So um, I thought that the show was better than a lot of what I see on the History Channel. I, it was better than an episode of Ancient Aliens, in my opinion. Um, I think we're dealing with facts. And when you hear from the pilot themselves, someone with uh, the kind of credentials Commander Fravor has and uh, these other witnesses, uh, it certainly adds uh, some gravitas to the witness testimony and the veracity of the tales being told. And uh, I think that's positive. Um, I was really surprised that they snuck in towards the end. This is a, there are no real uh, spoilers here, but uh, they even got uh, Podesta, John Podesta on there just for a little blurb. He didn't say too much, but they still got him on camera. And uh, it's been interesting to note that um, they've been kind of cagey TTSA uh, over the last year about, you know, talking about what they do and who the great interviews to, and we'll get into that. And uh, but now we find out really that over the last year or since the release of the information, they've had cameras following them around behind the scenes, collecting footage for them to put this uh, six-part series together on the History Channel. So um, maybe that explains some of their caginess, although. Uh, DeLong famously went on the Joe Rogan show, and in my opinion, he just kind of ate shit on the Joe Rogan show. He looked horrible. He sounded nervous. He sounded kind of inarticulate. I think, uh, I think maybe he, Tom DeLong was intimidated by being on Joe Rogan, and I could be wrong. Uh, you know, maybe that wasn't the case at all, but I'm talking about my perception, my interpretation of having watched that interview from beginning to end not just uh, some of the random clips. And uh, so I, it's interesting. I've been somewhat skeptical of TTSA all along. Uh, I've been afraid that they have a profit motive in mind and that they're just kind of teasing the science slash disclosure angle to kind of keep legitimacy with the UFO community while really trying to spin this in a way to make a buck. And... I don't know, maybe a show on the History Channel is the first step in making a buck. But they do have investors, and uh, I assume that these investors want to return on their money. So uh, there had to be some kind of a game plan at some point of how the investors were going to be uh, reimbursed uh, once they reach profitability. And uh, there should be some transparency on the uh, financial end of that, I would think. So it would be interesting to take a look at that. So in terms of those kinds of shows on the History Channel, I give it a, it was better than Ancient Aliens. It was better than most shows. Um, I would give it a solid, in, in terms of production, presentation, and fresh content, I'd have to give it an A because um, 
uh, they were telling some new stories. They had new witnesses. It wasn't a big tease. They weren't really drawing any conclusions, but they sure did present the evidence well. So I think in terms of just straight up a television program and it being what it is, the subject being what it is, I gave it an A. I thought it was good. I thought it was very watchable, and I'll continue to watch the series, and I'll be interested to see uh, how other people interpret the show. And before I go tonight, I'll hop back in the chat room and see what everyone's saying, and I'll at least acknowledge what you're commenting on or what your thoughts are. So please feel free to share in the live chat, or if you're seeing this after the fact, not live, Please leave comments below and I will check out those comments and I will respond. I'm pretty good. I'm not always super fast, but I do go back through and I do answer people. And when you see those little likes and hearts and comments and stuff, that's me. That's not someone else acting for me. It's me going back in and looking and reviewing what's been said. So I just want you to know that I'm sincere about that and I thank you all. Also, I noticed that I picked up a few subscribers over the last couple of days. And if you're a new subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And uh, I just want you to know that I know you're there. So thanks for watching. So let's get on with the meat and potatoes, shall we? And that is this uh, article by The Intercept published today, January 1st, or January. <laughs> I wish it was January. It'd be a little cooler here. The temperature's starting to go up. But I digress. June 1st, 2019. The journalist in question is Keith Kloor, K-L-O-O-R. I hope that I pronounced his last name correctly. I'm pretty damn sure I pronounced Keith correctly. Uh, once again, the publication is The Intercept. And uh, I wanted to actually going to dip back down into uh, the article. Um, the, uh, the headline is, the media loves this UFO expert who says he worked for an obscure pentagram. The pentagram. Jesus, it's one of those nights. I'm trying to rush. I'm trying to keep that tight 30. The media loves this UFO expert who says he worked for an obscure Pentagon program. Did he? Question mark. Uh, big question mark. And suddenly the hackles get raised. Uh, dark journalist has, uh, I would say, I would give dark journalist credit with um, questioning Elizondo. Uh, he was one of the first people to kind of poke at this situation and ask about the veracity. So I want to give dark journalist credit. And um, it's... <sighs> I love news like this. I love shit like this. Not because someone fails or falls or falls short or uh, I don't want to make myself look better or smart by um, glomming onto someone's missteps or misdeeds. But at the same time, these guys put themselves out in the media, out in front of the public, and they go and they speak in person and they get paid to do these lectures and they've got this company and they've got these investors and just when you think everything's legit, you've got someone coming along, Keith Kluwer, who might be throwing a baby Ruth in the punch bowl. And uh, so um, in the article, and this is the interesting turn, uh, Mr. Kluwer spoke to a Pentagon spokesman who is Christopher Sherwood. And he acknowledged that the ATEP program, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, actually exists. He confirmed that it exists, and that's good enough. And uh, the Pentagon, Pentagon had done that previously, so it was good to hear that acknowledgement uh, once again. And uh, you just get some official government acknowledgement that, yeah, there's a phenomena here, and we're checking into it. And uh, what I really like is, uh, well, at, at, at first, part of the story involves a Carrie DeLong, who is the PR rep for TTSA to the Stars Academy, who obviously is a relative of Tom DeLong. And uh, she had had kind of a back and forth with John Greenwald Jr., whom I consider to be one of the most rep reputable people in ufology and someone who actually has integrity. Uh, John Greenwald Jr. is one of my favorite people in this industry, even though I haven't roped him into an interview yet, but I will. John Greenwald, if you're hearing this, I want to interview you. Anyway, 
it turns out that Elizondo turned down John Greenwald for interviews. If I'm not mistaken, he returned he turned it down repeatedly. They had kind of a back and forth about this, and Elizondo would not go on John Greenwald's show. I don't know if TTSA or Elizondo himself sees John Greenwald as a threat because of the solidity of his research and his penchant for facts and presenting evidence through documentation and uh, great eyewitness testimony evidence that's been collected. So I don't know if they see him as competition or I don't know if there was something to hide and made Elizondo uh, skittish about talking to Greenwald. I wonder if he thought that Greenwald would do a FOIA, dig into some background here because uh, you can find some records of service folks and civil servants. And maybe he would have uncovered that things were not as Elizondo claims that they are or have been, allegedly. If you won't talk to John Greenwald Jr., I'm going to be suspicious of you, no matter who you are. John Greenwald has a solid reputation. He's been at this a long time. He's one of the few people whose word I trust. And... If you're feeling skittish about talking to him, I think it's suspicious. But I'll leave that up to you, dear viewer, dear listener, dear watcher. What do you think about that? Do you think someone who would avoid an interview with a solid researcher like John Greenwald Jr., do you think they have something to hide? Let's look a little further into this. Now, the Pentagon spokesman, Mr. Sherwood, Christopher Sherwood, said, and I quote, and I'm quoting the article, there is no discernible evidence that he ever worked for a government UFO prog program, much less led one. And uh, I want to say that again, and this time maybe not trip over my words. There is no discernible evidence that he ever worked for a government UFO program, much less led one. Now, I know that the spidey senses of all of the disclosure people are going to be raging at this point saying, well, this is somehow the Pentagon or the military or the deep state. Uh, they're trying to walk this back or they're trying to obscure the facts of the case and tell a lie to cover their tracks. A la what dot, dot, dot. Who else have we kind of heard this about? Uh, Bob Lazar who had, some proof indicating that he actually worked at Los Alamos and then a lack of other proof of some of his claims, which has left conjecture out there in the Lazar case. But now we have conjecture about Elizondo. Luis Elizondo, did you actually serve in the capacity in the Pentagon that you said you did? And I want to further Mr. Uh, Sherwood's commentary. He says, and I quote it again, Mr. Elizondo had no responsibilities with regard to the ATIP program while he worked at OUSDI, which is the Office of Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Up until the time he resigned, effective October 4th, 2017. Just to let that read in, you know, preachers do this, and I'm going to do it a little bit tonight because this is big news. And I really want to sink in. Mr. Elizondo had no responsibilities with regard to the ATIP program while he worked at OUSDI up until the time he resigned, effective 10 4 17. Now, that's a pretty conclusive statement. There's nothing sketchy or wishy washy about that, there's nothing that seems like an avoidance of the topic or um, not addressing the topic directly. Uh, that's just a straight up saying, hey, this cat didn't work in ATIP at all, much less run the program. So now here we are left with, once again, what? Decisions to make, choices to make. Now, if we're really serious about this, we have to start digging and doing research. We might even have to find out who Christopher Sherwood is. 
to see who's this cat? Where does he come from? And is he a player in another game that might have an ulterior motive for putting Luis Alizando on the sidelines or discrediting to the Stars Academy for some reason? I don't know. I'm not going to... This This is a serious allegation. Could, could you imagine if Luis Elizondo didn't run that program, didn't have the involvement in that program that he claims that he did, and has been telling a lot of lies for a year and a half or so about what he did and his involvement in this? All the places he's been, Coast to Coast AM... I think he talked to Richard Dolan. He wouldn't talk to John Greenwald, though, would he? He wouldn't talk to a guy who's got literally millions of FOIA document documents from the government. He wouldn't talk to that guy, would he? Interesting. The guy with his finger on the pulse of the FOIA information from the Pentagon and the Defense Department is the one guy that couldn't get an interview with Luis Elizondo. So now we have to do soul searching. We have to do some researching. Is this Christopher Sherwood legit? Can we find out anything publicly through that office? Anything more? Is there a FOIA form that can be filled out to get a peek at Luis Elizondo's service record to get some kind of hint or clue as to whether there's veracity to what he's saying or if he's a liar? Could you imagine telling that level of a lie going on all of the news stations, giving lectures, all of the interviews? It would almost be like saying that you have exclusive access to aliens, blue avians, and that you're the sole disseminating source for said alien contact. Okay, it's not that fucking ridiculous. Let's let's admit it. It's not it's not that ridiculous. It's it's not. It's a little more straightforward than that. But now, what do we do when we have to look at the guys that we think we trust the most, the guys who seem the most legit? These are the guys with the credentials. How put off? All of the other guys involved at to the Stars Academy from Lockheed Martin from the Pentagon. These guys are all working together. And I know I'm going to, once again, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Dark journalist was sniffing around this. I know a couple of months ago, maybe even further back over the course of the last years, I've been uh, reviewing uh, dark journalist tweets. He's been uh, sniffing around this case. And, uh, not necessarily this case per se, but this incident of TTSA coming up and kind of changing their story as they went along. They kind of seemed like they were going to be all for disclosure. And then it's like, well, is this disclosure for profit? And then they kind of trickle out the information a little bit at a time. And so that also draws skepticism because <clears throat> it pisses me off when I hear so many people talk about disclosure and they talk about how important it is and what a crime against humanity it is to withhold the knowledge, to withhold the technology, especially technologies that could help uh, cure some of the ills of our modern civilization. And uh, then turn around and pretend that you have some big chunk of the truth, but then you want to dole it out a little bit at a time to your own advantage financially. If disclosure is that important, if it's that big of a crime against humanity for the government, the powers that be, the deep state, Q, ha, call them what you will, okay? If it's that big of a crime for them to hold back on this information and technology, then who the fuck are you to hold back on your information and your evidence? You should release it all at once. It should be transparent as much as it could be, unless the information was leaked to you and you have to protect a source. Once again, back to last night's conversation of Assange and Chelsea Manning, then you might have a situation where you have to protect your source. Then you might be getting into some shit with the Pentagon. 
But beyond that, there's no reason not to be transparent. There's no reason not to release every bit of information you have, if it's that important. So don't play to me, don't play to the UFO community, don't play to everyone else out here that you've got some important information that's gonna change our view of the world and the universe and our place in it. It's gonna change our perspective of who we are and maybe even where we come from and perhaps where the future of humanity lies. Don't play that game. Don't come here playing that game and then hold back. That's bullshit. It's pure bullshit. Now I want to take a break. We've got five minutes left. I'm going to keep that tight 30 going, but I'm going to look in the chat room here and see who's here because uh, I do love my peeps. I see UFO Gandalf. Jasmine Emmerich, dark journalist discussion with John Greenwald of Black Vault a couple of weeks ago was awesome. It covers TTS, ATIP, UFO, CIA cover-up. All about DeLong and Elizondo, a, much watch, a must watch in my opinion. So this has been uh, addressed somewhat, I guess, uh, with uh, John Greenwald and dark journalist. Both of those motherfuckers, I've been trying to get them to come on my show and they'll go on each other's show and they won't come on mine. What is this? What am I, chopped liver? Eh, whatever. Pursuing X, look at skunks, Skunk Works jets from the 1960s and the drones they were launching over China and Russia. Uh, say hello, goodbye. Is Hal put off even a real name? I don't know. Every time I go to ask him, I get put off. Um <clears throat> I, yeah, I was a contact in the desert last year, but not this year. I had family obligations. So I'm going to play it up, and I'm going to talk a lot right now. I'm going to be at the International UFO Congress down in Phoenix this year, and I'm going to have a booth. So if you want to see me and you want to talk and say hello and chit-chat, come to Phoenix in November. Find me downtown. There'll be more information coming. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put all my eggs in the, the, the home game. Uh, basket this year. UFO uh, Gandalf, not long till awakening now. Um, da, 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 blue eyes. Oh, I am just going to joke with him. <laughs> Pursuing X. And Tasha's going to bring me some leftovers. We're going to go to that. Uh, oh, I forget what the hell the place is called. It's uh, I can never remember it because I'm stupid when it comes to foreign languages. Fogo de Chao Brazilian Steakhouse. Uh, actually, I'm going to be having Chilean sea bass, but uh, it's a fantastic deal. I don't know if you've ever been there, but if you haven't, uh, go there. Do yourself a favor. So, yeah, sure. I'll bring, uh, bring some leftovers for you, Michael. Not a problem. Reverb, reverb, reverb. Is there reverb in, my, in what you're hearing? There shouldn't be. Normally there isn't. If there is, let me know. But anyway, I don't want to digress too much. If you are enjoying these shows, if you're digging this show, if we got some rapport going on here, please like and subscribe and share this video. I would love it if you guys would do me a favor and put this on blast and just a bunch of people share it. And maybe since I have sort of breaking news that I might have gotten to at least the dirt on this article with the intercept. Cause I know John Greenwald wasn't talking about that two weeks ago because it was only published today. So maybe I can get an advantage that way. So please like, and share. And I want to give a shout out to my friends, Jiggy from paranormal hood, Jimmy Pearson and Mika and Sarah Pearson. C.W. Farmer and Kelly Chandler. Uh, it was revealed last night that Walter Bosley signed a book for C.W. Chanter and, and actually signed it C.W. Chandler. And uh, it occurred to me to start calling them uh, C.W. Farmer and Kelly Chandler. And I think those are great aliases. I, I think they should use that and run with it. You can let me know. Satellite Mency 4, I see you in there. Hello, thank you all for being here. I appreciate so much. And I think explaining esoteric is going to be uh, on uh, probably starting right now or in a minute or so. So keep up with Contact in the Desert. But find me on Twitter and Facebook at My Forces Live. Find me on Facebook 
and check out those pictures. Everyone have a good Saturday night. See you next week. Goodbye.